Okay, folks, it's the first video I put together for this intro to GIS class. So what I'm going to be doing today with this first one is quite simply just showing you where the uh, ArcGIS software exists on your computer. I'm going to show you how to get the data off of uh, Canvas and bring it onto your computer so you can complete assignments and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so pretty basic straightforward things if you have no experience with GIS uh, this will be incredibly helpful uh, or even if you have limited experience this should hopefully be helpful um, in that I'm, I'm gonna really try to uh, uh, you know point out some key things that I think quite often um, they're, they're kind of overlooked when we're starting to learn some of this stuff and, and stuff that I was taught years and years ago when I started uh, uh, using this software and it really it really has, has helped and it's uh, uh, stuck with me here. So we'll go through all that. All right, first thing I want to, uh, to work on here uh, is just to make sure that you guys have ArcGIS loaded on your computer. I had the, the lecture audio stuff I gave to you guys last week, uh, discussed you know, how to get that ArcGIS for home uh, program where you know you spend a hundred bucks you get it for the year so hopefully you guys were able to purchase that download it uh, and if you haven't you know made sure that, that all worked what you should be able to do is click here on this start button in the lower uh, left here go into this list of different programs that you have scroll down into the A's and find this ArcGIS folder and within here, if you open that up, you'll see a whole bunch of different programs that exist. Uh, and, you know, with a lot of this stuff, we're not going to be messing with. You'll find that with, you know, throughout this course, there'll be plenty of uh, tools and things in ArcGIS that we never even get to. There are plenty of things that I, you know, having worked in this since, what, 2001, uh, so, you know, going on two decades now, um, you know, I've never used some of these things because it's just not the kind of stuff I do or I need to, to worry about. So don't be, be uh, uh, intimidated by this. If you see stuff and you don't know what it is, it's totally fine. You can either just click on it and see what happens uh, or, you know, do some Googling or, or whatever. Feel free to talk to me. But for the most part, you're not going to worry about any of this stuff you're going to really just be focusing on this program, ArcMap. Okay, that's what we're doing. And I have, just note too, I have version 10.7 loaded up on my computer. I have no idea what the latest uh, version is. If you guys, you know, downloaded stuff uh, and yours is a 10.8 or a 10.71 or whatever, it'll be fine. There should be no problems here with following along and, and us uh, working together. We'll, we'll talk more about that stuff later on if need be. Um, but click on ArcMap uh, here. Just left click once. You'll get this little rectangular window thing that pops up saying it's loading up. Um, hopefully that'll just take a little bit uh, of time and then it will give you this big sea of, you know, white blank space and all of that uh, if this doesn't work you have a problem and typically what will happen is it will get that little first starting um, thing popping up uh, you know saying that it's trying to load ArcGIS and then you get some kind of error like you know license not detected or, or something like that if you get that error you need to go back figure out what what needs to be done right pay attention to what the error message says uh it might be as simple as you didn't actually authorize the software and put in the key code when you purchase the thing and all that if that's the case go back and do that if that doesn't work um what i'll quite often what i'll do is if i get an error message with this program or really anything else i just google the exact wording of that error message and hope that that you know someone else has solve that they can help me out and i can fix it myself and if that still doesn't work then you guys need to uh just you know stop everything contact the esri help people the technical help or support or whatever and let them know you paid the money for the software it's not working 
you know, let, let's fix this because it'll be really important that you guys can get in here uh, and do this stuff because this is where we're going to be doing the majority of uh, the work for this class, as I said. All right, so right now, first step, make sure this loads up. So if you see something that more or less looks like this, perfect. Everything's fine and we can continue on. And if yours looks a little different, I'll talk about these different toolbars and stuff. Don't worry about that if you don't see something like that says GPS up here. As long as you see something that more or less resembles this, you're ready to go. All right, so let's minimize that. Um, and we'll come back to ArcMap. Uh, another thing you can do too to make this easier uh, on Windows, if you right click on the uh, program itself, um, like mine says unpin from taskbar, um, but yours, if you haven't done this, it'll probably say pin to taskbar. Go ahead and click that. And that way, even if I close it, I still have the little icon here. It's just nice. It saves you, I don't know, half a second, um, but that's just what I do. So I don't have to click in here and find it and load it up. I can just click on the program right here and it loads it up that way, right? So that's just that's just something you can do. Pin it to the taskbar and you look kind of hardcore um, when you have that, right? It makes you look like you're a real GIS person uh, when you, you know, you do so much GIS. You need to have it right there holstered on your uh, taskbar. So there you go. Do that or don't. Um, now, let's go uh, to the internet and get into Canvas. So go ahead and log into your Canvas uh, web page. Uh, and in here, I'm going to show you where to find the data for these different exercises and assignments that you guys are going to be doing. And I should also note, if you're, you know, if you're in the class, you know, enrolled, great uh you know go ahead in here and, and follow along if you're not enrolled in the class so you found this uh video just on youtube or uh you know from my website or whatever you're not going to be able to get into our uh, canvas page here but feel free to email me there's my email address here mpasis at avc.edu send me a note I'll, I'll uh, email you the different files we use if you'd like to be able to follow along and do this stuff. All right, but if you're actually in the class, um, you should have access to this and go into files. And it's in this file section that I'm going to store um, all of the data that you'll be using as well as other stuff. Your readings are here. Some different things will pop up. But in this data folder, I have a whole host of things that we'll be working on uh, in the future. You'll probably also see, um, you know, some other uh, uh, things pop up here. Some things might change depending on what I decide to do later on or if I decide to tweak stuff or, or whatever. Um, but for today, we're going to be working with this South America folder. And if I click in here, you're going to see a whole lot of stuff, right? cities we have what six seven uh, different um, files that have the same name they have that same cities but a different extension so we have cities.cpg cities.dbf cities.prj and so on and what these are uh, are a shape file which is a type of gis data you'll be reading about that stuff in the uh, in the readings that are assigned but it's a very simple straightforward form of GIS data uh, and we'll we'll talk more about it later on when I get more into data types but the idea is that it's you know it's a single shape file in concept but a single shape file is made up of all of these different files it needs this dot shx file it needs the dot shp file and the dbf and and so on so in order for this to work you need to have every single file here stored in a folder in the same place on your computer. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean when we actually download this stuff. If you were to just click on these, um, just here in Canvas, if I just left click once, Canvas has no idea what this stuff is. It doesn't know how to you know, show it to you, uh, give you a preview or whatever. Uh, it will allow you to download it, um, but don't do that we don't want to individually download this stuff 
because it's going to take forever, right? So when you need to access the data, download it to your computer uh, and use it, um, don't go all the way into that folder. Instead, just go to this main data area right here, right? So again, files would be the main thing or you can click at it here on the side, then go into just left click once, go into data, and then with the folder you need, hover your mouse over it so it gets this blue highlighted uh, color here, but then move your mouse over to the right and you see these three dots and it'll happen as you you know move up to any of these, it'll, it'll do it for all of them. But go ahead and left click once on those dots and then hit download. Okay, and as that's thinking up here, it's bundling this stuff together and it's putting it in what we call a zip file. And then when it's ready, it, it'll you know show up down here. And I'm using Chrome, um, which you know it's it, use whatever you want. If you like Firefox, if you like the I don't know, it's not Internet Explorer. When it, I think it's like Edge or something really hardcore and sexy. Um, yeah, I don't care what you use. It should all work in the same way. Use what you're comfortable with. Um, I simply use Chrome because it's convenient because at school our, our stuff is all in the whole G Suite um, thing. So if you're using Firefox, this process could look a little different when it actually bundles up and, and downloads. But from here, from Chrome, it'll let me know when it's done and ready to go here and I can hit on this little arrow guy uh, and I have a few options. I'm gonna select show in folder and I'll get why that is uh, when we do this. So I click on that, it takes me to my downloads folder which is where this is. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on that data underscore export dot uh, zip or zip and I'm going to cut the folder or the file here uh, and I'm going to go into my documents folder and just the way again yours might look a little different if you have things that aren't uh, set up the same way here but go from downloads into documents and in here if you installed ArcGIS you should see this ArcGIS folder that exists right here and so I'm going to double click in there and then I'll right click and paste okay yeah, you could have also clicked and dragged I mean I don't care really how you get this export uh, folder into here um, but bring everything you do into this documents ArcGIS folder and and I'll show you why again all this stuff it might seem kind of picky, um, and kind of you know anal, frankly. Um, but you'll see it'll it'll help you out as you do this. You won't uh, you know lose data. You'll always know where your stuff is. It's just a good habit to get into. Okay, so you'll you'll put it in here. Now another thing to be aware of as you're going through this stuff, you might simply see data underscore export, but none of this dot zip stuff right and again this is called the extension of the file and now windows and as well as you know mac operating systems um they're set up to try to make you not have to worry about this stuff right and average people doing average things on their computers they don't necessarily need to know what the extension is the computer can figure that out and it, you know, it knows what to do. If you click on a, uh, say, like a JPEG uh, file, the computer knows. Okay, we need to, you know, open up a, a, some kind of photo software app or whatever to be able to view this stuff. But in GIS, we're gonna do a little more with these files, and so it's always good to know these extensions. So if you don't see this .zip, or if you know later on you don't see everything, I think it's in view. Um, yeah, right here, over on this side, file name extensions, I've got that checked. So if I didn't have that, I wouldn't know necessarily that it's a .zip file. I mean, it can tell me this stuff over here, but it's way easier to have this set um, as we, we go forward, okay? So make sure you can see those extensions in there. All right, now the next thing to do 
is to actually extract this stuff. So a zip folder or file or whatever, it's uh, it's a compression process where it's taking, in this case, it took this entire folder from here, this South America thing, uh, and it grabbed all of that stuff and it stitched it together into one downloadable file. And it also compressed it, meaning it made it smaller. Okay, so in terms of the size of the data, it made it smaller, so it's easier to download. Uh, and you know, it's also therefore easier to upload or to email to someone or save on a flash drive or whatever, right? So that's that's what this is. And it's really great. We use these quite a bit for dealing with GIS software because if if nothing else, it makes it so we don't have to download all of these uh, you know individual cities files one at a time. We can zip it together, download it, keep the stuff all in the same place. So that's that's why we use it. That's why you need to get familiar with this stuff. Now, what we also need to be able to do is extract the. Um, data that are in here and if you right click on that file uh, I think Windows will just give you this extract all option right here uh, and that's fine with just this dot zip file we will most likely uh, in future weeks be dealing with some other types of compression software not all of it uh, is Windows uh, able to handle all right so a really good move is to download the 7 zip software freely available online just google 7-zip uh and you'll be able to uh, uh trek that down in fact let me just to make sure you guys don't download you know horrible things let me just try uh whoops seven zip right here yeah it's the seven zip dot org or seven hyphen zip dot or you should be able to download it uh right here Okay, so that's the uh, the idea. All right, uh, so you can download that freely, you know, install it on your computer, and that will allow you to mess around with some of these other types of compression software. Gives you a little more control as well. Uh, I'm simply, I'm just going to do the same kind of, you know, extract here, a very simple one. So if I click that, I now have this South America folder. Okay, I also have the original zip file right but it's i've got the contents uncompressed taken out here and i can go in here and i can see all of this stuff and again this is where it's very useful if i go back in here and i turn this off it keeps some of these things um in here but you you know still you you have stuff lost we want to know what every single um file type is also because this one's connected to uh adobe illustrator um but that's not what we're doing with this stuff right it's not actually an adobe illustrator file so make sure this is selected it'll just make your life easier okay and so once you've done this we come back out here do yourself a favor, right click and just delete that data export zip file. We'll never need it ever again uh, because we've extracted the contents right here. So what you want to see is the South America folder. And if you say you needed um, this thing, you know, a compressed version of this again, you could just go into 7-zip uh, and, you know, actually, you know, compress it in this way. Or you can come back into Canvas, download it again, um, so you can always, you know, get access to it. But just to keep stuff simple, delete the things that you no longer need anymore. Okay. Uh, now from here, a few things to point out. Number one, you'll notice it's South and then this underscore and America. You want to get in the habit of not having any spaces in any of your file names. Okay, and it's because ArcGIS for, you know, for years uh, was, was notorious for just crashing or not completing tasks simply because there was a space somewhere in there. That single little space in between, say, South and America would screw everything up. And it, it seems like it's better these days, but you still, you just, you don't want to have that extra headache right so it's way better to get in the habit of just putting in like this 
underscore uh, right here, or even just not having that. Some people would do like a capital S South and then a capital A America, but no space in between. Doesn't really matter how you do it. Just keep it as simple um, and space free as you possibly can. And even if you don't need to do it, this also kind of gives you that look of like you've been doing this for a while and you're a real, again, this hardcore GIS person. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, and then again, in here, um, we still see these multiple files and really you can click on this stuff. Windows isn't gonna know what to do with this stuff. Uh, so from here, we're gonna kind of leave this behind uh, and in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. I'll minimize this one and I'm gonna go back into Arc Map and I will maximize this, which is what you should all do. Uh, you know, utilize your entire computer screen when you're messing around with this stuff because it's uh, uh, it just makes again makes all this stuff so much easier to be able to see everything in here. All right, from here, let me talk. Uh, quickly about a, a few things. Number one, in this first main toolbar uh, that you have, one important button that's on here is this add data button. Um, and if you click the drop down next to it, it actually gives you three options in here. So add data, add base map, add data from ArcGIS online. Okay, if I click add data, that's a way where I can go find stuff and bring it into uh, ArcGIS. Okay? The problem, though, is that ArcGIS, for you know the amount of money that this stuff costs, you'd think it'd be a little more intuitive uh, and understand how like Windows works and, and all of that. It doesn't necessarily automatically point to specific locations on your uh, computer, right? So there's this folder connections option. If I click on that, you'll see I've got some stuff loaded up in here. If you do this for the first time, I think it's just empty. I don't. I think this is all stuff you manually um, put in here. And so to do that, if you need to access something, like we've got some disk drives, I've got some of my cloud folders and stuff like that for just other projects I've used. If you need to be able to connect to a specific location, you hit this connect to folder button here and you can tell it where you want to go, right? Now the trick with this though, is don't go to a specific place. Cause what it's gonna do when you go through here is it's going to map to you know this location and, and put it right here. Um, but quite rarely do you wanna go to a specific folder, right? Instead what you wanna do, like if I click down here, is I, you know, I wanna go to my desktop or I want to go to the documents or, or something like that. So keep it as simple and straightforward. I'm not going to do uh, any of this stuff right here, um, but just keep that in mind. It's a very weird thing that uh, ArcGIS does and it's a very frustrating thing. But if I go back and this little arrow just brings you up one level, so it'll take us back to where we started. Uh, you can see up here home and then documents slash ArcGIS. If I click there, we'll see that South America folder. And so this is why it's good to just get in the habit of anything you download, bring it into this folder. Um, and since we're downloading these zipped things and we're gonna extract it and we already have this folder, uh, it works great. But if you're working on say your own project or like your final project for this class or something else, don't have stuff just freely floating. Try to get in the habit of making folders in which you are saving stuff. Like we're gonna be working with this South America data, so we have this South America folder and we're gonna save everything in here and just, you know, be, uh, be very deliberate with these things as you're, you're working through here. Okay, so we can access this. That's why we saved it in that ArcGIS folder. And if I double click here, now what you see is I have, say, that cities uh, file, um, but it's simply one cities file, just that cities.shp. And so what ArcGIS is doing is it's looking in that folder that's actually stored on Windows here, but it's taking all of those separate files, the cities.dbf or .prj or whatever, and it's just putting it all together and just calling it cities.shp. 
So it knows how to handle this stuff. And it also knows, uh, based on, say, the green color here, that it is a shape file. Uh, the fact that it's got these three little dots in here, it's a points shape file, meaning when we bring it in, the cities are represented as individual points, as opposed to, say, polygons, which is what this lakes and countries file is, so an actual shape. And then, say, this rivers one, it's a line shape file. All right, so it not only tells you it's a shape file, but it tells you what kind of shape file in there. And so what I can do is just click on, say, cities and add that, and it will bring it in. And you can kind of start to see the shape of South America in here based upon the location of the cities. And so you can bring uh, the rest of that stuff in as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and go in here and add and I think also yeah if you click on so what I did here is I left clicked on countries hit the shift button and held it and then went down to rivers and clicked on that and it grabbed everything and then I just hit add right and you'll find there's so much stuff I do automatically that sometimes I have to pause uh, and make sure what I'm doing is going to work so that was a, a case right there you kind of get into this habit of you know, you just get these these uh, uh, habits of, of bringing stuff in, doing operations and things like that. I'll try to be slow and deliberate and show you guys how to do that. Uh, but feel free to experiment. There are other ways to do this, other ways to bring data in. Okay, but for now, this will work for us right here. So you can see the actual outline of South America as well as we can see uh, Africa. We can see, uh, uh, you know, Central America, Mexico. All of that, we've got the cities, we've got rivers, um, we have uh, the lat long line, so we can see a lot of stuff. We're actually bringing in these shape files here. So you will download it and unzip this stuff um, in uh, you know the Windows environment, but when it comes time to bring data into ArcMap, use this add data function right here. Or we'll be talking about uh, Arc Catalog here, later on uh, this is another way to do it in fact i might as well just since we're here um if you click on it or even just hover on it like this you see that same home documents um except why well that's not good don't have my thing here what you might need to do sometimes is right click and hit refresh and yeah sure enough south america now shows up it's another maddening thing about arcgis if you don't see the uh, folder that you know exists in there when in doubt right click find that refresh and it will go back and look again and bring new stuff in it doesn't automatically go out and look for updates but in here same thing we can see the same stuff and you can simply click and drag uh, and bring that stuff in okay but now you can also see i have two cities files here so i'm going to just right click on one of them and hit remove and it's important to note too that it doesn't say delete, it says remove um, because you're just getting it out of this environment. You're not actually going to destroy the file or whatever. You're just removing it from this, this map, right? Or this data view that we're, we're looking at here. All right, so make sure you get all this stuff brought in here. And then the next important thing we're gonna do is we're gonna save what we're doing. So within ArcMap, what we are doing is we're making what's called an MXD file. Okay, so if I hit save, which you can hit this little floppy disk icon. This is what the little disks we used to actually save stuff on used to look like. And that icon we still use, even though most people have no idea what these things are. Uh, you can hit this, just left click it once to bring up uh, uh, this stuff. Um, yeah, you can uh, also, if I cancel this one and do this file, I can do file save this way. Uh, you know, a whole host of, of ways I can do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. I'm actually going to go up. Let's see. I want here. I want is it this documents. Yes. ArcGIS, South America. Um, within here, I'm going to save the map that I'm trying to make. And it says no items match your search. It's because, yeah, I have the data in here, but I don't have one of these ArcMap documents or these .mxd files. 
and I'm going to name it something, you know, that's meaningful. You never want to take the default uh, name in here. So I'll just call it, how about just S underscore A-M-E-R, because I can make sense of it, uh, and I'll hit save. And that way, if something goes wrong, if I lose power, if this uh, program crashes, whatever it might be, at least this thing is saved, right? So the, the data, these shape files, they're already going to be saved. They already exist on my computer. But this bringing them in and when we start to change colors and mess around with stuff, that's going to all exist within this MXD file. And so we want to save it right off the bat once we start working with the stuff and then also get in the habit just after you do stuff go up here hit this s or you can hit control and s at the same time and that'll save it but just save as often as possible because you'll have this program crash you know multiple times throughout the semester it just it just happens it's incredibly frustrating but the best scenario is yes it crashes but you just open the MXD file back up and it's it's right back where it was that last time you saved it, which was just moments before it actually crashed, right? So get in that habit. All right, so we've saved this. We brought stuff in. Now what I want to do is just kind of talk about the different things that exist in here, okay? How this stuff um, you know can be manipulated, how we can actually do things uh, in here. And then this will also help you complete the exercise I'm assigning you for this week, which is to simply make a basic attractive map of South America, right? Highlighting these, uh, you know, the countries themselves. Some of the cities, we can talk about that as we, we get there. It might be too busy uh, if we put all of these cities in here. Um, but, you know, I'll leave it up to you guys. But I want to see you take this raw GIS data and turn it into something that's a basic attractive map. Okay, that's the, the main idea right here. Um, so to start with, before we even get into some of the uh, manipulating the data in here, I just want to talk about some key things we have, um, you know, in ArcMap itself. Okay, so I already showed you where Arc Catalog was and so this is sometimes a more useful way of manipulating data or bringing it in than to use this add data function you can also see we've got our mxd file is saved in here so it at least updated that for us so that's our catalog another thing in this program that we'll uh, use is called arc toolbox though we're not going to use it today for what you're doing here but if i left click on this little arc toolbox thing let's see i'm wondering if this it's never a good sign when it's thinking for too long and i'm wondering if it's going to crash nope okay we're good dodge that uh, but again that's why we save all the time um in here these are individual tools that will allow us to do things to the different gis data and we'll be working on this in you know a handful of weeks uh, when we get into geo processing and see how these different tools work but this is how we can go from simply presenting data to analyzing it, manipulating it, asking it questions, and, and doing some really hardcore analysis that, you know, that's what you use GIS for. We're not interested in just making a pretty map. There, there are other, frankly, easier ways to do that than in ArcGIS. But what we can do here is we can actually, you know, make our own new data make new maps and there's there's cool stuff in here so we'll we'll come back to this but that's arc toolbox uh another thing is i just closed that reminded me what you'll probably do at least once is you'll get rid of this you'll accidentally hit this button right here and you've just gotten rid of your table of contents window and and students always panic um it's just it's what we do because it, it goes away and then suddenly you don't know how to get back to the actual shape files themselves or do anything with this stuff right here right if you do that don't worry just go up to windows click on table of contents and it will come right back and this table of contents window is incredibly important because this is where we can access uh and really do stuff to the uh shape files that we brought in Right, so like we have our cities one right here, and if I uncheck it, it just turns it off. So it's still here, it still exists, but 
but I can turn it off because maybe it's too busy or I want to see what it looks like without it or, you know, whatever uh, the reason might be. And I just left click it again and it turns it back on. Uh, same thing with any of these, right? The latitude and longitude lines or the countries themselves or whatever. So we can just click it, turn it on, turn it off, and we're good. Another thing that's important in here is that it draws these different layers based on the order in which they appear in the table of contents window. It's like right now, I can't see lakes at all, right? We should have Lake Titicaca down here in between Peru and Bolivia. That should uh, uh, show up, but we can't see it. And that's because it's, it's there, but it's underneath the country's layer, right? So we call these individual shapefiles or whatever. When we bring them in here, uh, we can just refer to them as layers. And so it's going to draw them on top of one another based on this stuff. And so if I left click and hold and drag this lakes one above the country's one and let go, those lakes will show up, right? So we can see that in here. Okay, and if it's kind of hard to see or whatever, we can also zoom in. And the easiest way to zoom is using this main toolbar here. Uh, we can click on this little plus magnifying glass. And the way this works, uh, it's kind of tricky for some folks when they start using it. But it's you don't just click it and go from there. I mean, you can. If I just left click once, it just kind of slowly, you know, zooms in right there where I clicked. But the way to really use this is to left click and hold and then drag it. And you can see it's got this, this rectangle it's showing. Wherever I drag it out to and then release is exactly where it will zoom into. Okay, that's the idea. If I want to get closer, I could left click and drag and release and zoom in right there. Okay, so that's this is how this tool works here. Um, if you don't like that, if you went in too close, uh, you can hit this go back to previous extent, this blue arrow, and it'll go back to that previous place where you had zoomed in moments before. You can go this way. Or if you just get too zoomed in, sometimes what happens when students first work with this is they'll, they'll accidentally do something like that, and then everything's green, and they have no idea what's going on. Uh, and maybe you do it, you start to panic a little bit, and so you, you know, you've done it a few times, and so you go back to the previous extent, and it doesn't help at all. If you're really panicking, hit this full extent globe here, and it will zoom out to the entirety of the, uh, the map data that you have, right? So you can figure out where you are. And then you can, okay, now I know where I am, and you can carefully zoom back into South America or, you know, whatever. Okay? We also have this fixed zoom in and out, which allows you to just, you hit it, and it just slowly brings you into the center of the frame. Okay, that's the idea right there. Okay, and again, I don't think I mentioned this stuff yet. Your toolbars and things will look a little different from mine, most likely, the first time you turn this stuff on. But you should, by default, see this uh, bar that's right here. And yours might actually be floating out here somewhere, which is how they, they I think, load up right off the bat. Um, but with any of these, you can just left-click and hold up in this gray area here, and you see that little cross arrow thing uh, shows up, and you can drag it wherever, and you can dock it. You can actually put it up here, uh, you know, in some place, and that gets it out of the map frame. Doesn't really matter where you want to put it. Just be aware you can move this stuff around. You can also, if you don't see something up here, uh, you can right click. Just and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm right clicking up here where these toolbars go, but I'm not actually clicking on a toolbar. If that makes sense. I'm just clicking in this kind of grayish white nothingness, uh, right clicking on it, and it gives me a list of all the different toolbars that exist. Right? So you should start out with the tools one, the standard uh, one, I think, is this stuff up here with the saving and opening and, and all of that. Um, these other ones like GPS. It's from some stuff I was doing with GPS equipment. So you can just uncheck it, turn it off, or if I go, oh, wait, you know what, actually, I need that, I can turn it on. Um, that's just how this stuff works. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn this labeling one off because we're not going to use that right away. I'm going to drag my layout one up here. If you don't see the layout one, don't worry about it. It'll show up in a moment. 
Um, but just, you know, take some time. Get this how it works for you based on your screen and where you want to use the stuff. And just know you can always move it whenever you need to. Okay, so that's, we got into how we zoom in, got into the toolbars. Uh, you know what? I'm just out of habit. I'm going to hit save because I can uh, and we'll, we'll move on. So I uh, was able to drag this lakes above the countries uh, so that we could actually see it. Another thing I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this, but this is just something I typically do with these kinds of maps, is I'm going to left click and drag this lat long file underneath the countries. So we still have it there. We'll still have this reference uh, grid, but it's also not covering up everything else. It just looks a little cleaner. You can do that if you want. Uh, I don't have to. I like it. I'm going to hit save uh, just to be safe. Uh, but we can drag this stuff as we like it. Now this dragging only works if we're, we've got this list by drawing order button highlighted. Right? We have some others like list by source, which we'll use later on when we get into tables and some other types of data. Um, but if I have that, I can't actually drag this stuff at all because it's just showing me where it's stored on the computer. And we have a few different lists by visibility and selection and these different things here. But if you if you want to drag it and you can't, the thing to do is make sure you have this list by drawing order selected. And then I can get in and click and drag and move this stuff wherever I want. Right. That's the, the idea there. OK, so got this stuff sorted out. If you don't like it, don't worry about it. Um, you know, plenty of time to mess around with this stuff. But what I'm going to do uh, is just show you how to do some basic, you know, visual changes to the uh, uh, map elements themselves, right? Or to the, the feature classes themselves or layers. We'll get into all this terminology later on. We're not going to dwell on it too much right now. Or you'll, you'll see some of this stuff in the, the readings to like what does a feature class mean or this term layer or, or some of this other stuff. All right, so don't worry if it's the terminology isn't quite clicking yet, it will, all right? But just, just follow along on the computer, play around with this stuff. All right, the first thing that we might want to do uh, is just play around with color because, you know, that's a big part of maps. And what ArcGIS does is it brings in stuff with just a variety of different kind of default colors. It never brings anything in uh, in a way that it looks attractive right off the bat. What you need to do is always change that color scheme. And to do that, we have a few different ways of going about it. The easiest way is you hover over one of these uh, little uh, things they call it the swatch, I think, in ESRI speak. Uh, but under countries, I've got this kind of mint green rectangle under here. If I just left click that, it brings up this symbol selector and this will allow me to change the way countries look. So right now the fill color is this, like I said, this mint green thing. The outline width is this 0 0.40. The outline color is this kind of dark gray and that's what it's doing. Now I can also uh, just select, maybe I don't like this, maybe I want yellow. Um, I can just click this default one and I could hit OK and it will change that, right? Maybe I don't like though what they offer here and you can see there's some pretty basic colors to start with. Then you get into this stuff down here, uh, like poison overlay, you might be tempted to go like, yeah, sounds awesome. Uh, and you hit that and hit OK. Don't do that. Um, not only is this just a weird yellow bit of nonsense uh, going on, but these um, these patterns can get really busy, can be difficult to make sense of. It's hard to, frankly, it's hard for my eyes to um, make sense of this stuff. Uh, same thing with like these grassland things. It might look cool to start with, but it it it's too much quite often. So you can play with it, um, but for your actual project that you're doing here, stick with something a little more simple or straightforward okay we're gonna go basic to start with the the general idea is you know you play by the rules to start with you keep it as simple as possible to start with and then once you've mastered those basic rules then you can open it up and just play around and get uh you know a little more uh, bold with some of your choices but maybe you don't like any of these what you can also do is hit this fill color uh, in here, and you've got more colors that uh, open up. 
Um, you know, some of these, this lime dust, Tecate dust uh, here. It's kind of a nice, uh, you know, kind of tan brown color. That looks kind of cool. For land, you can do that. You can also change that outline color if you want. Um, you know, it's this one's black right here. Kind of started out with like a dark gray. Um, but you can also, what's cool, if I wanted this kind of lighter brown, I could pick, say, a darker brown for the outline. And then that just, you know, kind of looks nice in there. I could also step it up. And again, I'm just left clicking to get uh, back in here. I could make it a bolder outline you know maybe i like it maybe i don't in this case i really don't but you can uh, sometimes it is useful to do that i can bring it down to just one that looks okay all right fantastic that'll that'll work for now uh and i'm not saying that for your map you need to pick this exact color in fact i encourage you not to uh you know be bold play around with stuff um but again i said here i said be bold don't be too bold um don't do don't do like the hot pink here. I know you want to. Uh, you're going to see something like this, and, and at least half of you are going to think, like, yes, this is glorious. Uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, you'll get an F. Uh, I swear, don't push me. Um, this is just too much, right? So use use these, like, bright, extreme colors sparingly. Try to go for stuff that's a little more mellow, however you want to do it. You know, you can play around with these different, these different colors uh, within reason. I would say try to get some of these more, you know, less, less offensive, I guess is the term I'll, I'll use here. Okay. But do that. And again, once you get something you like, or even if you're just, you don't like it, but you've, you've done a lot of stuff, hit save. Okay. Uh, and you can do this with all of these things like rivers, you know, it defaulted to purple on mine. Yours might look differently, but I can select colors in here. You can also see there's some preloaded, things different types of uh, roads we've got river right here so i could just select that one it's blue that looks pretty normal uh same that you know lakes like look in there there's one that just defaults to lakes which is this light blue with the darker blue outline and it looks good with the the rivers thing so you can do that you can go into different shades of blue in here uh you know maybe you don't like this kind of generic you know atlas kind of blue here maybe you want to get something a little you know dustier looking or, or something like that play around and as always always hit save and another thing that can make a map look good uh is to not have this default white background because that's just what it's going to do no matter what you add in here if we you know turn this stuff off um it's just going to be white in the background and it's just you know bringing this stuff in here and yeah i can change the color of the countries but it's not going to change that white in order to do that and i encourage you guys to do it because it does make your map look a little cooler uh you can right click on where it says layers and go down to properties and this thing that is labeled as layers and we've got these three or four little sheets or whatever on top of it this is what we call a data frame and we'll we'll be working with these more in the weeks to come um, but this is where all of our data is being stored at the moment it's got this border here and we'll see that when we go into layout view but background is just left as nothing and we can go in here and it's got a weird thing going on where it gives you a few different options uh to select from a bunch of different blues and some of this uh, uh these browns and yellows some of this you know gradient stuff if you don't see anything you like totally fine just pick something to start with you can hit apply to check it uh and it'll put it in the background and of course with a map of a continent having a blue background to indicate ocean water makes a lot of sense but if you don't like that blue exactly like remember I just changed the blue of this lake. Maybe I want to match that one. After I've done the apply thing, I can go in and find, I think it was this one uh, I used, and I can change that. And so I can tweak it, and I can use all these other colors that are available. Okay, so that's an option. And we'll talk about color more. Um, and to be safe, you can use the blue oceans, the brown land, pretty you know simple convention in here. But also feel free 
to play around uh, with some of these other colors. And, you know, you can get kind of more of an old timey kind of look, right? Or maybe you want to go for something like a light gray uh, in here. Just, again, to kind of have this stylized look. You can play with it, but I swear to God, uh, if you're picking this kind of stuff, no, F minus. That, that hurts uh, just to look at it. Um, but, again, just, you know, play around, be not too bold, um, but never settle for the default. Okay, with something like this, don't settle for that white background. There might be cases where you want to, um, but in this case, do something, you know, that's at least somewhat interesting to look at. And I'll just go back to this. We'll play it safe right here. Okay, and once you've done that again, hit safe. It might seem ridiculous, but you want to keep doing that. Uh, another thing that you can do uh, is turn on labels. So like for the countries, if you right click on that, Got a whole host of options here. Um, and one of these options is this label features. If I click that, it's going to label the different countries in here. It's also going to label islands and other things uh, that exist. So you see like St. Helena out here. There's an island out there of that name. That's why that shows up over there. Um, so it can get kind of busy. It's just automatically putting this stuff in here. Um, but feel free to, you know, play with that. And what ArcGIS is going to default to is this eight-point Arial font. Never stick with that. Again, the defaults, whatever ArcGIS, basically think of it this way. Whatever ArcGIS has made as the default is the worst possible thing you could use for a map, right? It's just they tried to, like, not offend anybody, and you got just this kind of garbage uh, to start with. No offense, uh, ESRI. So what you need to do, you can turn on these labels, um, but even more importantly, right click here and go into properties. And from here, we have these tabs, the symbology tab. That's where we could change this stuff. So it's another way to get at uh, colors, but we've got a lot more we can do in here. We're not gonna mess with this stuff today but we'll we'll get into this uh symbology tab and see some of the other cool stuff we can do later on um, but we also have this labels tab right here and this labels tab will allow us to change the size of this stuff we could also technically change what the name or the label is going to be based on if i hit this drop down this label field this is actually pulling from the attribute table of this country's thing, which I'll show you in a bit after I close this down. Um, so we could technically choose any of these things here. Now we don't really want to change this stuff based on what we're doing, so we don't need to mess with that. But like I said, don't stick with this aerial thing. You know, go in here, get you do something that just doesn't look like that default. Change it from you know a size eight to something else. Uh, you can also hit this symbol tab. You've got some preloaded things, um, like this Times New Roman 14-point font. Um, you can do that. They've got this one, which is kind of this cool grayed-out thing. I mean, you can do that if you want, but also just feel free to go in here. And if you don't know any of these um, fonts, and I have some I've loaded on, you, yours might not, again, look exactly like mine, um, but just play around with it. Click on it. See what it looks like. Um, if you can't really tell... I think I hit OK, I hit Apply, you know, that looks kind of cool. And you're going to have issues. Like over here in West Africa, it's a mess with all these labels just getting placed over one another. You can even see this here with some of these smaller South American countries get all kind of locked together here. Um, that's going to be, you know, a mess. There's not a whole lot we can do with it yet. I'll show you guys how to mess with this stuff later on. But, you know, maybe you need to get a little smaller or, or something like that uh, and, and, you know, go from there. Okay, so play around with that. Again, do some labeling, mess around with it, see what you can do. Let me just hit OK and hit Save. Um, all right, so we got that. Hopefully this is all making sense. Really, all I want you to do for this this first exercise is to be able to bring this stuff in, uh, bring it into ArcMap, change the colors and the fonts of the labels and things like that, and just make something that you're happy with. And I've just quickly done this 
you know, in in uh, just, you know, a few minutes here, like you should spend more time. Don't just click on something. Go with the first idea. Take some time to play around with it. Uh, as I said, too, with these cities, um, if I turn on the labels, it might just be way too much uh, in here. We can experiment with that. And I'll show you this quickly. Let me put it this way. You don't have to put cities on the map if you don't want to. But if you want to uh, mess around with this stuff, let me right click and go into open attribute table. And let's look at some cool stuff we can do here with our attribute table. This is connected to the shape file. So it's actually that .dbf file that we saw earlier. And so what it does is it connects to like the individual cities that we have here. We have these data that are associated with it. So we'll have things like the city name, the administrative names, so like the, you know, the, the bigger political unit, the country in which it exists, its status, is it a national capital of the, uh, like Brazil is the national capital of Brazil. Uh, provincial capital means like a, you know, like a state capital is the way to think of it. And then we have population. We have population rank. So it's classified uh, just with simpler you know, ranking scheme, this pop class. Uh, is is showing you you know how big these cities are from 1 million to just under 5 million people or 500,000 to just under 1 million people and so on and so what we can do uh, is we can label stuff based on here like these city labels are coming from the city name right here so where we see Brasilia say it's it's pointing to this this uh, attribute table and that's how it knows to put that name right there but what you can also do if i close that let's go ahead and right click on cities go to properties and let's go into definition query and query builder i'm going to left click on that and this is we're going to do more with this stuff but we can keep this kind of simple here uh we can go down here and find like we can just do population. I just left click that twice, double click it, and it puts that pop right here. And then I could say, let's say population greater than, and then I don't know what the range is. I could hit this get unique values. This is what's going to be available. This negative 999 uh, is going to mean like no data or something like that. That zero, I highly doubt there's anything in here that actually is a population of zero. That's actually poor um, data entry most likely um, but we can see stuff I mean we have these tiny little cities we've got the massive ones right that clearly we go down to the bottom uh, where we've got millions and millions of people so we could simply say population is greater than and we could type in a number let's say 500,000 I'm not putting in the commas or anything to separate those zeros because our data doesn't have it, right? So I've got that. If you hit verify, it says it was successfully verified, and then I can hit OK. And when I hit apply, what you should see is a bunch of these cities should disappear, right? Any that have a population less than 500,000 will go away. So we do that. Sure enough, it worked, right? So it's a way to get rid of some of these little tiny towns and stuff. If we're kind of, you know, making a map of all of South America, we don't necessarily want to put every single thing in there. Okay? So that's a way to do it. If that doesn't work, if you don't like it, you can also just from here, you could change it and say, let's say 900,000 and hit apply. And it'll get rid of those that were, you know, between 500,000 and 900,000, right? Another thing you could do in here is I could just get rid of this. I could go down to that status thing that we saw. Status equals, and if I hit this get unique values, I could do, you know, national capitals, right? And hit verify, it worked. If it doesn't, it's, again, we're gonna get more into this stuff. Don't worry, if this stuff isn't working for you, don't worry about it, because we'll spend more time with it later on. It can be a pain, um, but if it works, you can hit okay. And you can hit apply. Now, the problem is, like, Brasilia doesn't show up 
right? Because uh, it was that national and provincial capital, I want to say. So what I could also do is status equals national capital or status equals uh, national and provincial capital or, oops, no, I don't want that. And that's how it gets, this is how fun it can be. Status equals, I'm going to get unique values, uh, this, this provincial capital enclave thing. And I think that's, is that all of my uh, options there? I think so. Uh, I can hit verify. It worked. Hit OK and hit apply. And so that way we just, we get those capitals, whether they're strictly national capitals or if they're also provincial capitals or whatever. Okay. This is a whole lot of nonsense in here. Again, if you followed along, if it all made sense, go with it. Um, if not, don't stress out over it. I don't want to dwell on this because it's really nerdy. It gets to be a thing where a single, you know, missing quote uh, or space or, or whatever can screw everything up. So if it works, great. If not, that's fine too. Okay, you can just leave them off. But if it did work and you want to put that there, great. You can also change the, um, you know, the, the shape that's used. I could just do a circle. If I had that one, that's a little too big. Looks kind of weird, but I can drop it down like that and keep, you know, playing with it until it, it turns into something I like, right? And you have other shapes and stuff. You don't have to use a circle. Um, use whatever. It doesn't have to be black or, or whatever, okay? But you got that stuff right there. All right, I'm going to hit save. And then finally, the last thing you need to do, once you get this thing ready to go, um, you were in the data view right now we've been able to change colors and fonts and things like that um, but to actually make a map like something you would print you want to go into this layout view down here so again following my mouse we've got on the left here data view and then layout view this will bring you to something that looks like a sheet of paper and it's showing you if you were to just hit print from here this is what would would show up right now but what we can do is actually make something pretty, like this is horrendous, um, in here right now. From here, what we can do uh, is zoom in to our exact location, get it all like we, uh, we want it. Um, but in order to do that, we have to be aware of this new layout toolbar that now is, is uh, accessible to me. For you guys doing this for the first time, it may have just kind of shown up out of nowhere. But we've got a different set of uh, different set of uh, magnifying glasses and things like that. And so what this all means uh, is this magnifying glass here. I can still click in here and like drag and get closer in and all that. Zoom into this stuff, uh, you know, as, as best I can. Um, this is what I use here to do that. But if I want to zoom into the page itself, I select this one. And if I click and drag, it's not going to mess with the map data itself, right? It's actually going to zoom into the page, right? So that's the difference here. And if you zoomed in too much, kind of same thing, you can do this, go back to extent. Or if you need to, um, you know, just kind of quickly get back out, you have these four arrows that are going in, in you know, each direction of the page. If you click on that, it'll get you right back there. Okay, so that's just the, the difference there. Um, what you can also do in here is with this insert tab, you can insert things like a legend, a north arrow, scale bar, pretty you know basic map element stuff. Um, feel free to play with that. Uh, we're going to talk about north arrows later on. We're going to spend some time talking about coordinate systems and projections when you actually need to put in a north arrow well, there's a whole thing behind that. So we'll discuss that stuff. You can play with it. Um, but here's here's a way in which I would encourage you guys to think about this stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do is right click over here and I'm going to turn on this draw toolbar and I'm going to bring it. Uh, there we go uh, up here. OK, so turn that on and I'm going to use this rectangle tool and I'm just going to click and draw 
a rectangle. So just left click, hold, drag it out, and you get a rectangle. And don't worry, if you don't like its shape or whatever, as soon as I've drawn it, you get this yellow box right here, I can bring my mouse over these little blue turquoise colored uh, squares here. And when it gets like this, I can left click and hold and I can make it skinnier, um, you know, or taller in this way, or I can kind of shrink the whole thing proportionally, however I want to do it. So we can change this stuff. You can also, if you just double click on it, um, you can get in here, I can change the color to something else, right? The outline to something else and so on. But I think is a really good, useful, clean way to do this stuff is to draw this rectangle and then whatever it is you want to add, let's say you wanted to add a north arrow. And again, we'll talk about this stuff later on and you have these different options in here. But let's say you wanted to add one of these things to your map. Let's do that one um, right there and hit OK. It'll just throw it on there wherever. Um, but if you have this rectangle already drawn, you can start to kind of collect all of these map elements in here. And that way everything is contained. If you look at a, you know, a map of the world or whatever, your classroom wall or, you know, online or, or whatever, typically what we see is things like scale bars and north arrows and legends and titles and all sorts of information. It's all kept in one area. Sometimes it's kept in a rectangle, sometimes it's not. But this is kind of a nice way to contain all of this stuff uh, and it makes it neater. It's students kind of have this this tendency for whatever reason to if you don't do the whole rectangle thing you'll add these things in here and maybe you put the the north arrow up here and you add a scale bar you know and you pick one and and it, we'll talk about you know which ones to use and when later on but let's say i just pick that one and i hit okay and so it throws this thing in here um and i just put that down there and then I put say you know a title over here and so on it's hard to make sense of all this stuff right where these things are it's not a very useful map but if we have a little rectangle that's a different color and sometimes it's a pain to you know select between these things um, but it's a different color from the background we can put this stuff in here we can line it up neatly it's just going to look better your map's going to look a lot better right so in fact i'm going to hit save because i've been doing stuff okay another thing you can do like this insert title um, but all it's going to do uh, oh actually oh they changed it oh it used to just say like s underscore a mayor or whatever you uh, did here um, you know so whatever your your title is going to be it could be as simple as south america um, you know let's just do that let's hit okay and it's going to throw it up here in the center top but again if you got your rectangle thing going here go with it uh, except it's that aerial font you can double click on that, go in here. Um, you'll see this, this HTML style coding in there. You can ignore that. You get change symbol. So we can go in. I don't want Arial, you know, I want Bond Shrift. Let's see, I don't even know what that one is. What's that? That actually, that's not bad. That looks kind of good, right? And it might not look that different for you. Um, it is, it's, it's enough to not be Arial. Right, so you can do it that way. You can uh, hit OK. You can also just add text in this way. I can do something here. Get rid of there we go uh, the word text, and I could I could also type in you know South America and hit Enter, and then again double click on it. Get in here, change symbol. I can make it bigger. I can change uh, you know the font to whatever and go that way okay so i just i have these different ways of doing this stuff but what i want you guys to do um is to just spend some time with the map data change colors and fonts and and you know mess around with the cities and all of that stuff um just gonna play around with it start to make a map you're okay with if you want to you can continue to play around with like that definition query thing that we did to get rid of some of the cities and labels and all that stuff you can experiment with some different things um in here but you know you don't have to but feel free to to you know see what you can get away with as you do it um but if you're stuck with just like having barbados 
just be this giant label here, it's okay. Don't stress out about it right now. It's driving me crazy. In fact, this whole map is driving me crazy because it's just not uh, attractive uh, at all. But it's also because I was just clicking stuff, right? You should spend, at the very least, an hour between when you bring this stuff in and when you're done with your map. Okay, just think of it that way. And really, there's nothing wrong with spending five hours when you're starting out on this stuff. You want to take your time, make sure it's something you're proud of. Okay, by the time you're done, really, I mean, I've got details on Canvas about what I want, but really, ultimately, what I'm looking for is I want to see that you've, you've zoomed in on South America. You've got it in this layout view. You've got a title. Uh, you don't have to put any of this stuff in here. Um, again, because we'll talk about the North Arrow or Compass Rose thing or whatever. We don't always want this. We can use it here, but I'll, I'll get into the details behind that. Also, the scale bar, put it if you want. Don't put it if you don't want. But just, you know, make something attractive. And then once you're done, first off, hit save because we always do that. But then once you're done, go up here to File and then export map so that load and it's going to allow you to turn it into something that isn't an mxd file um and we'll get into more details later on but i don't want you guys uploading these mxd files to turn them in because basically it's useless on my computer i can't make sense of it we'll get into the details later on when we start to uh play more with this stuff but what i want you to do is do this export map, again, file, export map, and save as type, I want you to do a PDF, okay? So these other ones, like this AI, it's an Adobe Illustrator file. It's something we do when we're doing more uh, high-end cartography. You can save it as a JPEG or a you know, TIFF or whatever if you just want an image file, but I want a PDF, so click on that. You can, uh, you know, whatever, it's gonna default to whatever you named the file as. Um, but so it can be this S underscore A-M-E-R. It can be called South America or whatever. But do me a favor. Just, I mean, you'll be uploading it to Canvas. Um, but put your last name in here somewhere, either at the start or at the end, right before that dot PDF. Just in case I download all this stuff to my computer and I'm not grading it through Canvas, I can see, um, you know, whose it is and, and all of that. Okay, so do that, hit save, and also get in that habit, I'm going to save it in this ArcGIS South America folder. It's going to default because that's where I've already been saving this stuff and the MXD file in there, but I'm going to save that there. And then once it saves, and we should be able to come back in here. We've got all this stuff in here, but I've got my PDF. If I double click on that, I should see... Yeah, right here, exactly what was in, let's zoom out a little bit, what was in ArcMap, right? So it saved, let's close that. It saved all this stuff, put it in here. It actually, frankly, is gonna look better as the PDF, because it's just this, the, you know, the Adobe software here is gonna draw better. But I want you to save this, and then this file is what you're gonna upload to Canvas. So you're gonna be turning in the PDF, and that's how you're gonna get the points for the assignment itself and then what i'll be doing you guys have the due date when you guys have to turn this in up on canvas i'm going to uh you know go through once those are turned in i'll be looking at the maps i'll be giving you some comments on stuff but honestly this first week i'm not expecting masterpieces um just you know give me something that shows that you deliberately change stuff tried to make an attractive map as best you can all right, so I think that's all we need to uh, chat about this week. Let me glance at my notes to make sure I didn't forget anything. No, I think we're I think we're pretty good. So that's all you guys need to work on this week. Also, do the reading, make this map, upload it, uh, and then, like I said, I'll be giving you some comments, and we'll just keep moving on to slightly more challenging things as the week uh, as the weeks go on. In the semester, we'll be building on this stuff. And if you're not totally happy with your map to start with, like frankly, this is the most disgusting thing in the world. It's driving me crazy. Um, it's okay, because we're going to, by the end of this class, we're going to have really 
good looking maps and we're also going to be doing really impressive analysis so we'll be building on this and you'll be amazed at what we get to do uh in the rest of the semester all right best of luck geographers any problems uh, whatsoever contact me through canvas come to my office hours email me or whatever uh and in the meantime have fun playing around with this stuff